Hi, welcome to my craft corner. I'm Heidi with Oni Go Stamping. Today I have a really awesome card layout to show you. It uses background paper and you could use any background paper you wanted to make this card design. I'm going to be using the In Good Taste Designer Series paper from Stampin' Up. It's brand new this month and it has lots of great wood textures, tiles, textiles, all sorts of stuff and you're just, you're going to love it. It's so awesome. I can't wait to show it to you. I'm also going to be talking about die cutting and using embossing folders. So lots of great tips coming your way throughout this video. Before we get started, if you don't currently have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator that you work with regularly, I would be happy to help you. If you need to place an order, you can hop over to my website and all of the ordering information is there, but I know that it can be super overwhelming. So if you have questions or you need help figuring out what you're doing, feel free to contact me. Just leave a comment below or send me an email. All right, Oni Go, let's get stamping. Okay, before we get started on the card today, I just wanted to take you a take a moment to show you this new In Good Taste Designer Series paper. This is a super sized Designer Series paper pack. Normally the Designer Series paper comes with 12 sheets uh, in six different designs, double-sided designs, two of each design, right? This one, it comes with 12 designs and 24 sheets. So that's 12 double-sided designs and it's all sorts of wood, and linen and tiles, concrete, linen. There's also some of this uh, kind of a canvas with paint on it. More um, textiles, woods, and they're all just kind of a little bit different. And then I can turn it over and I'll show you the other sides too. You get more wood, um, canvas, more stone, tiles, stone and tiles all sorts of things. It's just absolutely beautiful. All these different, you know, kind of home, um, home improvement, home decor type of stuff. Just absolutely beautiful. What we're going to be doing today is I'm going to start by cutting some circles. So I'm going to pull out my uh, Big Shot. Stampin' Up! has come out with a new um, cutting and embossing machine, but it's not available yet. When it does become available, it's going to work a lot like the Big Shot machine. So I just, you know, wanted to show you today how to use this um, in case it's new to you and give you some kind of some tips and pointers. So this is the Big Shot machine. And I'm going to be using the layering circles dies. I keep my dies in the folder they come in, but then I add a magnetic sheet inside to hold them in place. And I'm gonna grab the two smallest circles. Then I'm going to use my magnetic plate. So here's my magnetic plate. And I'm gonna put down my cutting plate. Now this one I've used for, I don't know, five years or so. It's really, really chewed up, but it still works. So I'm gonna put down my cutting plate. Then I'm gonna put down my paper and I'm gonna put down my two circle dies. On top of that, I'm gonna put a second cutting plate. Now you'll notice that this one is not chewed up for like the other one. For one thing, um, this one's a lot newer. My top cutting plate eventually cracked in half, so I have replaced it. But the other thing is that you always wanna use the same cutting plate on the bottom and the same cutting plate on the top. The cutting plate on the bottom is gonna get all chewed up by, by the dies, whereas the cutting plate on the top isn't. So it's gonna stay a little bit cleaner looking. Um, and it's just better for your machine to always keep those in the same spots. It's gonna help keep your, um, your cutting plates flatter because they will warp if you, um, if you don't use them kinda, oh, with time they're gonna warp a little bit. And there's ways to avoid that and how, ways to get them to kind of flatten out after you've done that. One of the big things that I find I didn't do it on this one, um, but you will notice when I take this off, so I cut those circles, right? I'll just set those aside for now. Um, but you'll notice that my cutting plate is chewed up all around. That is one of the big things to help keep your cutting plates flat. Die cut on the edges, right? Put your dies all the way to the edges. Some people have a tendency that they plop their die right down in the middle every time, and that will definitely warp your plates um, very badly. So definitely try to move your dies around all over the place on your, on your cutting plates. All right, I'm gonna set the magnetic plate aside. 
and then we're going to do some embossing. And I want to talk about the embossing folders just a little bit. So currently Stampin' Up! has two types of embossing folders. They have their regular embossing folder. This one is actually retired, but I just want to show it to you because I don't have any of their current regular embossing folders, but they do still have a few. Um, but it's really, really super thin. And this one you would use um, with a regular platform and then with two cutting plates, just like if you were cutting. Okay, so that's just a regular embossing folder. And then they also have 3D embossing folders. Okay, and I want to talk about the 3D embossing folders for just a bit. They've currently come out um, starting like last year. So for the past year, they've come out with a new style of embossing of 3D embossing folder. So I want to show you this is one of the old ones because you might have one of the old ones um, sitting around at your in your craft stash too, right? It's hard to see, but the old ones are just a little bit thicker. And if you have two of them in your hands, um, you're going to be able to tell the difference. You can feel the difference between how thick they are. So the old ones are just a little bit thicker. So when I get them, I like to put the title on the top um, and then 3D and then I put an O for old or N for new. Now, if you get any new embossing folders right now, none of them are gonna be the old style anymore. But if you have some older ones, they could be. Older 3D ones could be the old style. With the old style, you would use the Big Shot platform and then just your regular cutting plate on top of it, okay? With the new style, you need your embossing folder and you always wanna put the fold side into the machine. You don't wanna put it so it's on the side, you always wanna put that into the machine. I'm gonna take a piece of early espresso cardstock that is three and three quarters by five inches and I'm gonna set this inside. On top of this, I'm gonna put my blue plate. So Stampin' Up's new machine, they're coming out with a special plate, is what it is called. Um, it's no longer going to be blue, um, but as far as I can tell from the catalog, you can't purchase it right now, but from what I can tell, it looks like it is going to be just like this blue plate, and it's what you're going to need to use with the 3D embossing folders. So I like to call this my blue plate special, okay? So either your blue plate or eventually a special plate, you're going to put that on top. And then just roll that through. And my embossing folder shifted, so I'm just gonna go in and straighten it up a little bit. And then once that goes through, it does make kind of a noise. You hear that clunk at the end, right? That's normal. I set the plate aside. And you take this out, and it's got this really nice texture to it. I'm gonna get this out of our way. So there you go, you can see that really great texture. Um, that brick and mortar, it looks like a brick wall. Now that I have that, I'm gonna go ahead and glue that to a piece of, it is three and 15 sixteenths by five and three sixteenths. And I know that some people do not like 16th inch, inch me measurements. You could do it um, four inches by five and a quarter, that would be fine. Personally, I absolutely love Orders that have been cut so that the piece, the mat underneath is 3 16ths of an inch wider and taller. That 3 16th, it just makes a really nice thin mat. I think it's beautiful. All right. So quarter inch is okay, but I love 3 16ths. So I glued that just like that. And now I'm going to take a piece of eight and a half by five and a half inch cardstock in early espresso again that I've already folded in half and I'm just gonna attach this to the front. You'll notice my glue is coming out a little bit slow today. Lots of people have like little holders. I just stick it between my knees so that it holds it upside down and is ready to go. I'm gonna glue that on. All right, now I have a piece that I cut with the Stitch So Sweetly dies, and I have the Hello stamp. This is from the Forever Fern stamp set. I'm gonna grab an early espresso ink pad, open that up, I'm just gonna tap that, that stamp on there, and then I'm gonna stamp it up towards the top, just like that. 
I actually want the bottom to be flat, so I'm gonna come in with a little tiny trimmer here. And I'm just going to cut off the bottom. Just like that. And now I wanna attach this. Put some glue on there. And I'm gonna attach that petal pink piece the bottom so that it lines up across the bottom. Now we cut some circles, right? And I've actually cut a whole bunch more circles. So I have a bunch of circles here. I'm just gonna put them over on my piece of paper. I have a whole bunch of circles, including the ones we just cut. And I'm just gonna lay these out kind of in a wave pattern, okay? So these are all wood grain ones. And I'm just gonna lay these out and kind of see what pattern I like. Um, I'm trying to use different colors, different woods. All right, so that looks pretty good, okay? And I do it kind of like in a wave. You don't want it to be super like in the middle or all the exact same. You want it to have um, some little variations in it so it's just a little bit different. These two small circle pieces on the outsides, I'm gonna go ahead and just trim off a little tiny bit so that it's gonna line up because I want it to stop before the edge of the page. And I'm gonna go ahead and glue those ones down first. I want those on the bottom. Move these out of the way. I'm just gonna glue that down and I'm gonna put it all the way to the edge of that top piece of early espresso. And you might just have to hold it there for a second. I usually, you know, take a drink of my coffee or something long enough for it to stick a little. This piece over here. And come in, I'm gonna line that side edge up again, okay? So now I wanna come in with this small piece over here too that I also, I think I want it on the bottom, maybe I, all right, we're gonna change this just yeah, we're gonna do that. I'm gonna change it just a little bit. I'm gonna come in with this piece and glue that one down. Sometimes I get a little too much glue in one spot. Just kind of push it, push it with my glue. All right, so I'm gonna glue that one down. And then I'm going to grab my Stampin' Dimensionals. And for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and use the black Stampin' Dimensionals because this is a darker, darker cardstock. So I'm gonna start by just putting three. I wanna go ahead and kind of be generous with my Stampin' Dimensionals on this because it would be really easy for the edges of these circles to get kind of smushed down. So I went ahead and put three on there. And then I'm just gonna glue that on I'm gonna come over here and do the same thing with this other large one over here. Real quick. One, two, three. And I'm gonna glue that one down too. And now for this smaller one, I'm gonna put one big one and then two smaller ones. And I'm actually gonna double these up. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull off the backs and I'm gonna stick a second, a second one right on top. This way, it's gonna be even higher than those other two pieces I just put down. Really get some dimension here. You come in with this other black one. You go, boom. Pull those backs off. Now you do wanna kinda of be careful. So this one right here is already popped up in the air. So I wanna make sure that I don't stick the dimensional on top of that. So I'm just gonna kinda of slide it in. Make sure it's not stuck on top. So there you go. 
quick and easy card using some really fun circle pops of that designer series paper. So I did this card first and then I was looking at it and I was like, I was looking at some of those tiled papers and I was like, well, what would happen if they were shiny? Okay, so I decided I wanted to make them shiny and I wanna show you how I did that. So that is card number one. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my supplies for card number two. And I have again done some of the steps already. I'm just kind of pushing some stuff out of the way over here. This one is gonna use gray, um, gray granite and petal pink again, okay? Now, what I noticed, let me go ahead and I'm gonna glue some of these pieces together. Okay, I realized that the piece of gray granite was not cut to the proper dimensions. It was um, the same size as the petal pink. So I just went ahead and trimmed that down. It's now three quarters by five inches. Okay, and I'm just gonna go ahead and glue that onto my piece of petal pink, which once again is three and 15 sixteenths by five and three sixteenths. And you could do four, four inches by five and a quarter, like I said. All of these dimensions are over on my website, so you can go over there and look for them. So I'm just gonna glue that down. Come in with my eight and a half by five and a half inch piece of cardstock that's folded in half. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna glue this to the front as well. I need to order me some more glue. It goes fast. All right, there we go. It doesn't take much though, but still. All right, and then I'm gonna glue that onto my piece of paper. This time I wanna stamp my, gre my greeting with gray granite, and I need to clean off the early espresso that I had just stamped. I'm gonna grab my gray granite, and this time I'm gonna stamp it the other direction. All right, so I have another piece cut with the stitch so sweetly, and I'm just gonna stamp that in the upper left corner. I'm gonna trim off the end again. And I'm gonna adhere it to my card front. It's clear, so it's a little bit harder for you to see. And I'm just gonna go ahead and glue that onto my card front. And it's gonna go sideways this time instead of up and down. Okay, so what I noticed when I was doing, when I was doing the embossing, right? I put clear embossing powder on this and I noticed, I'm gonna show you a couple pieces. I noticed that they were getting kind of a green tinge to them in the center. And I don't know if you can see that. Um, it's a little bit hard to see, but they kind of got kind of green. And what I realized is that I think that the embossing powder was getting on the back. And once the embossing powder got on the back, it kind of caused the colors to show through um, and do weird things. So what I determined to do instead was to put a piece of Whisper White underneath. So I have two circles here. I just put some glue on, okay? And you could glue it first, but I decided I wasn't sure exactly how much cardstock I wanted to use or how many circles I wanted to cut, so I just did it this way. And then when I put it on, I kind of rub it around to get the glue all the way to the edges and then stick it down where it's supposed to be. All right, quick and easy. Then to do, I'm gonna pull out a piece of scrap paper here, just to have it here. To do the embossing, I'm gonna start with my embossing, with my Versamark uh, ink pad and my embossing powder. Unfortunately, we don't sell giant things of embossing powder anymore like this um, we used to. Now they come in small containers, but I'm just gonna go ahead and use my giant crystal clear today. I'm gonna push that whole image down into my Versamark ink pad. And then I'm gonna drop it in my clear embossing powder, okay? And then to get even more of that embossing powder off the back, I'm just taking a paintbrush and I'm just going to brush off the embossing powder in the back. I'm going to take my heat tool and 
and hopefully you can see that as the embossing powder melts. And I'm actually gonna do this two times. So I'm gonna grab my Versamark again. Normally I would have waited for this to kind of cool down a little bit, so hopefully it doesn't get in my Versamark pad. And then I'm gonna brush off the back again. And I'm gonna heat it again. So hopefully you can see how that is now really 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 glossy. It's got a really pretty shine to it. And once again, ooh, I made a mess with the embossing powder over here. I'm just gonna brush that off. All right, once again, I have made a whole bunch of extras already. Okay, so here's some of the extras I made. I would go through the same thing and um, glue those all down like I did before. And I'm just gonna show you what that looks like. So let me grab the sample through the magic of television. Here's what that looks looks like. I don't know if you can see that glossy, but it's really pretty. All right, and I just want to show you one more. I have another one um, with kind of more of the textile ones too. So three different cards, all using that exact same design. Once again, thank you for joining me today. I'm Heidi with Onigo Stamping. Please let me know if I can help you with anything or if you have any questions. See you next time. Bye-bye.